Hello everyone. I'm Shirley Ann Higuchi, Chair of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation. I hope everyone's doing well today. This week we're looking at military service and the brave young men who volunteered or were drafted out of Heart Mountain, like Stanley Hayami, the young sensitive high school student from LA, and Joe Hayashi from Pasadena. In addition, we'll be talking about Senator Daniel K. Inouye, one of my favorite heroes, about his experiences during World War II while his fellow Japanese Americans were incarcerated throughout the United States. Thank you very much for joining, and this is Setsuko's Secret. In Europe, Russian forces closed in on Germany from the east while Allied troops pushed toward Berlin from the west. After the collapse of the final German offensive in the West over the winter of 1944-45, to 45, Germany effectively gave up the Western Front. Exhausted German soldiers began to surrender to Allied forces, but German soldiers continued to put up a fierce resistance in Italy, and as usual, the 442 2nd Regimental Combat Team was found at the most action. What war correspondents had dubbed the Forgotten Front heated up again the final weeks of the war. On April 21st, Lieutenant Daniel Inoue and his soldiers attacked a German unit dug in along a ridge near San Terranzo along the Gothic Line in northern Tuscany, where German soldiers had massacred villagers several months earlier in retaliation for an ambush by Italian partisans. Atop the ridge, three gunmen Germans fired at Inouye's unit, cutting down many of his 30 men, including Inouye, who caught a bullet in his stomach as he looked for cover. Inouye ignored the wound as much as he could and destroyed the first machine gun with a hand grenade and his submachine gun. A medic told him how badly he was wounded, but Inouye would not stop fighting. I was shot through the guts, he said, and the messenger walking behind me said, hey, you're bleeding. I thought some rocket hit me or something like that, and then all hell broke loose. Inouye led an attack with the second machine gun, which they destroyed before Inouye's collapse from loss of blood. He managed to crawl towards the third machine gun while his men distanced the crew. Ten yards away, Inouye stood up and readied his arm to throw another grenade. Just then, a German soldier shot his right elbow with a rocket-propelled grenade almost ripping his arm off completely. The grenade, however, remained tightly clenched in a fist that suddenly didn't belong to me anymore, Inouye said. His troops tried to rush to help him, but Inouye ordered them back, worried he might drop the grenade, causing it to explode and wound them. As a German inside the bunker paused to reload his rifle, Inouye pried the grenade from his right hand with his left, and threw the grenade into the bunker, destroying it. He rose again, fired his submachine gun, and killed the remaining German soldiers. Another shot him in the leg, and now my limb is just hanging with shreds and is flapping, and the blood is just shooting out, and you gotta be crazy for me to pick up my Tommy gun and move forward and fire, he said. In a way, then fell down and rolled unconscious to the bottom of the ridge. When he awakened, he told his troops to get back to their positions. You might say that's heroics, but if I had to think about it today, you don't think I'd be charging in there like that. The first injury, I would have said, hey, goodbye, I'm going. But at that time, I was young, and the mission was very important. Medics carried in a way, his right arm barely attached to the closest field hospital. There, medics amputated the right arm without anesthesia, and Inouye had received a great deal of morphine at the aid station, and doctors worried that the anesthesia might lower his blood pressure and kill him. His commanding officer recommended Inouye for a Congressional Medal of Honor, but instead he received a Distinguished Service Cross, the Army's second highest decoration. I guess they only give the Medal of Honor to you, you know, when you're dead, which is maybe the way it should be, Inouye wrote later. I was proud of them all, of course, and am now, but somehow they didn't seem terribly important at the time. 55 years later, Congress and President Bill Clinton would correct that injustice, racism, 
not in a way survival, had kept him from receiving the Medal of Honor. The fighting that wounded Inouye claimed the lives of two soldiers tied to Heart Mountain, the sensitive, artistic Stanley Hayami, who recorded his time in camp in, in a vivid diary, and Joe Hayashi from Pasadena, California, who enlisted in May 1941. Private Hayashi's unit of the 442 moved across German forces near the Tuscan town of Tendola on April 20th. That day, Hayashi, the temporary squad leader, led a squad to within 75 yards of a German position before they came under heavy machine gun fire. Hayashi ordered his outnumbered squad to fall back but stay back to help a wounded comrade to safely. He directed motor fire that wiped out three German machine gun nests. A day later, he single-handedly killed five German soldiers and wiped out two machine gun nests before he was shot and killed by a Nazi wielding a machine pistol. For his bravery, Hayashi was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. His sister, Kyo Hayashi, was a prisoner at Heart Mountain when her brother died. Two days after Inoue was wounded, his unit made another assault on San Terenzo, which was still heavily fortified by German soldiers. Within moments, German machine gun fire cut down the squad leader. Five other soldiers in the 442 died during that fight, the last of the Italian campaign. One was Private Hayami, who had rushed from a cover under sniper and machine gun fire to give first aid to a wounded soldier. He went to help another wounded soldier before he was killed by a sniper fire. He would receive the Bronze Star for his bravery in the same battle that wounded his brother, Frank. Stanley Hayami, whose artistic diaries would captivate future generations studying life during the incarceration, would never have the chance to demonstrate his talents in life. In his final diary entry on August 21st, 1944, he wondered about his friends in the future. I wonder what sort of future scientists and artists they'll make, he wrote. Like so many other before him, he never had the chance to find out. He died fighting for the country that had incarcerated him and his family. Hayami's story lives on at the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles and has been a subject of a film about Heart Mountain. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And next week, we'll be talking about panic which is a very common theme that we're experiencing around this COVID-19 crisis. So everybody tune in and I look forward to seeing you next week.